Hello, Math 8 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to teach you Chapter 5, Lesson 3, which is about solving systems of linear equations. This time we're going to use the elimination method. You have already learned the graphing method and the substitution method. This is the last method to learn, elimination. Please take out your spiral notebooks and open up to a nice clean page and write this at the top of the page. You will also need your RPJs open to page 112 today. Step one is to, if necessary, and this is not always going to be necessary, but if necessary, you're going to multiply one or both equations so that you can eliminate a variable. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here I have a system of linear equations. We have x plus 2y is equal to 5, and we have 2x minus y is equal to negative 5. So in step one, my goal is to see, do these two numbers, are they the same or are they opposites of each other? So I have a positive 1 here and a 2, so that doesn't work. This one has a positive 2, this one has a negative 1, so that one doesn't work either. But if I multiply the whole equation by something, I can eliminate something. So I can eliminate one of the variables. And here's what I mean by that. I'm going to choose to eliminate this second equation by 2. Now it's important that when you multiply uh, by a number, you have to distribute the whole entire amount. Okay. So the first equation, notice, remained the same. x plus 2y is equal to 5. We didn't need to do that. So x plus 2y is equal to 5. But the second equation, when I multiply through, we have 2 multiplied by 2x. So that's going to be 4x. And then I have 2 multiplied by, there's a negative 1 here. So 2 times negative 1 is minus 2y is equal to. And now this is the one that a lot of students make a mistake on. They forget to multiply to the last term as well. So don't forget that. 2 multiplied by negative 5, this now becomes a negative 10. All right, so now the reason why we did that is our next step is going to be to eliminate one of my variables. And in this case, I can eliminate the y. So step two is to add or subtract the equations so that you eliminate a variable and then you solve. This is why this is called uh, solving the linear equations by elimination. So if again, if we look at these two equations here, we can add the second equation to the first. And when we do that, we have 1x plus 4x here. So that's going to be 5x. And then you'll notice that 2y minus 2y, those end up canceling to a 0. So they're gone now. And then we have equals. Now we need to combine these two together. So 5 and negative 10 would be negative 5. Now we just need to solve what's left. So divide by 5 on both sides. And we get x is equal to negative 1. So what you're doing up in step one is you are multiplying by something so that you can eliminate. So it's a little bit of a trick as to figure out what is something you can multiply in order to eliminate. Now, in this case, I eliminated the y's, but I could have instead multiplied the top equation by two. And if I did that, then I would have eliminated my x's. So you can kind of play around with a little bit and the way that you solve it might be different than your neighbor and that's okay because there's multiple ways to solve these type of problems. Let's move on to step three. Step three is going to be to substitute the value that you got from step two into, uh, into one of the original equations in order to get the other variable and then you'll write your answer as x, y. So here we got x is equal to negative one. That means that I know that my answer has to have x as negative 1. So here's my answer here. So then I just need to solve for y. So the rest of this is just like what we did in the last section, which is substitution. We're going to take this and, and plug it back into one of the original equations way, way, way up here. So it doesn't really matter which equation you choose. I'm going to go ahead and do the top equation because the numbers look a little bit smaller there. 
So I'm going to plug it into the top equation. So instead of x, I'm going to put a parenthesis, plus 2y is equal to 5. And so notice what I did there is I just rewrote this top equation, but instead of x, I wrote parentheses here. In those parentheses, I'm going to say what x is equal to, which is negative 1. So now we need to solve for y. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And when I do that, I get 2y is equal to 6. Now I need to divide out my 2. And I get that y is equal to 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So 3 goes in that spot there. And here I have my answer of negative 1, 3. So that means if I were to graph these two equations on a graph, they would intersect at the point negative 1, 3. Please turn in your journals to page 112. Let's start with number 2. So I notice that if I look at my x's, they have the exact same number in front. The coefficient is negative 2 for both. So that means that this is the number that I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of my x's. Now, since they're exactly the same, it means that this time I need to subtract those two. Instead of adding, I need to subtract. So the top equation is the same, but the bottom equation, what's going to happen is if I s multiply in my negative here, this is going to become a positive 2x. If I multiply this negative in, this will become a negative y. And then if I multiply it into the, uh, to the end, this becomes a negative 16. All right, so now, now when I add these two equations together, I have negative 2x plus 2x that's going to be 0. So those are going to cancel out. Now then we have negative 5 and another negative 1. That will become negative 6y. And here we have negative 8 and another negative 16. So that's going to be negative 24. To finish solving, we're going to divide out our negative 6. And so we get negative 24 divided by negative 6 is positive 4. So now I already know my answer, a part of my answer. It's going to be 4 as the y number. So now I need to find out what my x is. So I'm going to take this 4 and substitute it into one of these first two equations. I'm going to choose the top equation there. So I'm going to rewrite that first equation, negative 2x minus 5, but instead of y, I'm going to put parentheses. So remember, this is exactly the same as this top equation up here, but instead of the y, I put parentheses there. And in, in those parentheses, I'm going to put what, what y equals, which we got to be 4. Now we need to simplify this problem. So I'm going to go negative 2x, and I'm going to combine those two together. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20 equals negative 8. Now we just need to continue solving. So I'm going to add 20 both sides. And that will get me negative 2x here is equal to 12. Now I'm going to divide out negative 2. And that gives me negative 6. So negative 6 comma 4 is my answer. If I were to graph those two equations, this is where they would intersect. Take a look at number 1. So if I were to look at this equation here, I see that my x's don't cancel out. But take a look at my y's. This time my y's cancel out because it's plus y and minus y. So this one is even easier because I don't have to subtract. All I need to do is add. When I add the second equation, these two cancel out. So then that leaves me with 1x plus 3x is 4x. And then I have an equal. And then I have 7 plus 1 is 8. I would like for you to finish this problem. So see if you can find out what x is. And then plug in what x is to one of the two top equations and solve for y. I would suggest the top equation. Don't forget to write your answer as an x, y ordered pair. All right, I got my answer as 2, 5. So that means if I were to graph these two equations, they would end up intersecting at 2, 5. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. On the next problem, number 3, I notice that I, could, uh, I have the x's can't cancel out, and neither can the y's. 
Um, so if I were to multiply this one by four, I could make it into an eight. So then it would be eight and eight, so that could work. Or I could multiply the y's, this one, by three, because that would give me nine and nine, and that would work as well. So I can either multiply the second equation by uh, three or four. I'm gonna choose three because it's a smaller number. Okay, so then my first equation does not change. 8x minus 9y is equal to 7. But my second equation does change. 3 multiplied by 2x, 6x. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9y. And then lastly, we have an equals, and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. So now what I can do is subtract. Notice I have to subtract them because these are exactly the same. So then when we subtract, this pulls in a negative here, and then we have this turns into a positive, so that's why we want to do that, because notice that it's going to cancel now. And then and lastly, this over here turns into a positive as well. So let's go ahead and finish this out. So we have 8 minus 6, so that's going to be 2x, and my y's cancel, so those are gone. 7 plus 15 is 22. Lastly, we need to divide out the 2, and we get x is equal to 11. So I know that one of my numbers, the x part, is 11. All right, we're going to take this 11 and substitute it back into one of our first two equations. I'm going to go ahead and choose the bottom equation this time. So 2, and instead of x, I'll write parentheses, minus 3y is equal to negative 5. And in those parentheses, I'm going to put my 11 that I got for x. Go ahead and finish this problem on your own. So solve for y, and then don't forget to plug in your y answer into your ordered pair. So pause the video and see if you can finish this. All right, I got uh, 11, 9 as my point. So remember, that means if I were to graph these two as lines, they would intersect at 11, 9. Let's take a look at this last problem. I notice that I have five, negative 5 and 9. Okay, so I could uh, make these both into 5 times 9 is 40. So I could, or sorry, 45. So I could make this top one into 45 by multiplying by 9, and this one into 45 by multiplying by 5. Um, otherwise, I could get rid of the y's. So if I did that, I'd have to multiply them by the top by 5 four so I could make it into a 12 and the bottom by three so I could also make it into a 12. Since 12 is smaller than 45 I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the y's so I think that would be the fastest way and easiest way to do that. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation all the way through by three and the top equation all the way through by four. So let's rewrite those first two equations. We have four multiplied by negative five so that's going to give me negative 20x. Now we have 4 multiplied by 3y. So 4 times 3 is 12, so it's 12y. Now we have 4 times negative 6, so that's going to be equals negative 24. All right, let's re rewrite the second equation. So we have 3 times 9 is 27x. Now we're going to do 3 times negative 4, so that's negative 12y. And lastly, 3 multiplied by 1, and that gives us 3. So now we have our two equations completely uh, rewritten. And you'll notice that now my y's are able to cancel if we add these two equations together. All right, so the y's will cancel out. And then we're left with, um, we have negative 20 and positive 27, so that's 7x. And then we have negative 21 once we add together negative 24 and 3. I'm going to let you finish this on your own. Don't for, uh, go ahead and solve for x. Plug it back into one of the top two equations, and don't forget to write your answer in an ordered pair. All right, I got negative 3 comma negative 7 there. If you did not get that, uh, please check your work and see if you can find your mistakes. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.